Hi, I'm Jenny Sandler from Homeschool UK. I'm a teacher with specialties in autism, ADHD, and dyslexia, as well as a parent of three primary school aged children. And I've been supporting families home educate their children for over 10 years now. Today, I'm going to talk you through some useful and practical suggestions to help you survive another potential round of home learning. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I like to think that for the majority of us, Home Learning 2.0 will be different and not as stressful as the first time around. I'm sure we can all relate to this picture and hopefully laugh it off as a distant memory, but we're in a much better place now. Our children are going to school, and if your child does need to isolate and engage in home learning, it will be for a temporary period of time, probably no more than two weeks. Schools and teachers now have plans in place with interfaces like Teams, Google Classroom, and Seesaw set up and ready to go. And we and our children have already lived through a home learning experience, so we have an idea about what to expect. So let's bear this in mind as we try to remain positive about the prospects of managing our children's home learning yet again. As I'm a busy working mother who's also studying part-time for a master's degree, I'm delivering this presentation with busy parents in mind. I know you have jobs, obligations, or younger children to look after. So my goal is to offer truly helpful and achievable, practical, useful advice. That being said, there is prep work involved, but advanced planning means less time wasting and less stress during the school and work day. Pop is my major piece of advice. Pop, plan, organize, prepare. Plan ahead. Familiarize yourself with whichever platform or interface your child is using. This means testing out the logins, seeing how to access the assignments, learning how to complete them. Sometimes you can type directly onto the document. Other times you need to insert a text box. Sometimes you actually need to print a hard copy. Play around with the technology so you can figure out how to save assignments, share them with a the teacher, submit them, upload them. It can be complicated and different depending on which program you're using. Often it's as simple as clicking the button that says hand in or submit, but sometimes you need to take a photo or scan a worksheet and upload it before you can submit it. My son in year four has recently started using Google Classroom for homework and preparation for home learning. And the Friday before half term, he came home with his login details and I eagerly logged in to see what he had to do and I couldn't access it. The classroom came up empty. Of course, I emailed the teacher. She suggested I log out of my own Google account, which is a good tip by the way, but it didn't work in this instance. And it took until after the half term break when he went back to school for the situation to be fixed. And he was the only one in the whole class that it didn't work for. So, Sometimes there are just glitches in the system, tech often goes wrong, and we had to wait until school restarted before it was fixed, as I said. So plan time in your schedule to play around with and explore your child's online learning platform. Depending on the ages of your children and which schools they go to, you may have several interfaces to plan ahead for. And speaking of planning, uh, passwords, keep those passwords handy. Um, I, what I did was take a picture of the slip of paper he came home with. And then just today, just right now, before I logged in to do this presentation, I went into his Google Classroom to check something. And even though I had saved the password on my computer, it asked me for it again. I don't know why, but it did. And so I went into my phone and I'm scrolling, 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 scrolling through all the photos to find the picture that I took of his password. So yes, well done me for taking a picture of his password, but really I should have, you know, left it in my notes or sent myself an email that said Theo's 
Google Classroom password or written it down in a book, I should have put it in a more accessible place. So definitely make sure you do that because if you've got three children and three accounts and different passwords, it's gonna drive them mad. Organize. Check out the timetable in advance so you know when your child is expected to log in for live lessons or complete an independent task. I strongly suggest that every evening you log in to see what they have to do for the following day and organize the checklist for you and your child. Schedule break and lunch times, no deadlines for submitting different assignments. It is likely that there will be a lesson followed by independent work, but the assignment might need to be handed in that morning or three days later. Make sure you know when it's due. If your child has pre-recorded lessons or has been assigned YouTubes or other internet-based activities, then queue them up in the correct order on separate tabs in the browser so they can go from one to the next. Being organized is key and it can be time consuming, but you can organize the day before so that everything is in place for the school day. Link the checklist to your own schedule so you know when you need to be available to help your child log into a live lesson or upload an assignment or even eat lunch. Set timers and alarms to remind you of these things, especially if you're likely to get absorbed in your own work or if your child is inclined to sneak onto Roblox instead of following the schedule. Prepare. Prepare, print everything that needs printing. Make sure the workspace is clear and ready to go each morning. Have a water bottle ready, leave snacks in an accessible place if you won't be available at snack time. Make sure your devices are charged. Supplies like pencils and rulers are in place and you've got enough ink on standby. If your child needs counters or 100 squares for math, then leave them in, a, in an accessible place where they can reach them so that you're not scrambling around looking for them. Make sure they've got their spelling books or any workbooks or lists that they might need to hand. Another interesting thing, um, teachers can and may often feedback directly onto their work that they've submitted up, you know, onto their Google Classroom or whatever interface they're using. So you might need to go back and check work they've submitted to see if the teachers commented and then prepare your child to make corrections or read the comments or possibly even redo the assignment. Um, another thing to bear in mind is that teachers will often put in one document several different pieces of work, usually differentiated. And so your child will know if they're supposed to do A, B, or C, or one, two, or three. But what you could do beforehand is delete the extra work that they aren't doing because then there's just less to scroll through and the, the page is easier to look at. You can also, for your child, um, make the font bigger. Often children need bigger font or maybe you need to go through and create more spaces between the lines. Quick, easy things that if you do in advance will help your child with their work later in the day. You can also, if your teacher doesn't do this, ask your teacher to provide an example of the type of answer that they're looking for. And this is especially important in math because um, children often wanna do things their way, which is usually quite quick in their head. And then they might make mistakes and it might not be what the teachers ask them to do. And if there's a particular method, you might need to remind your child of this. But of course, if you don't see an example, you won't know what that method is. Or it could be that there is a method and your child is happy to use it, but they're a little bit confused and you're not sure how to help. But if you had a clear example, you would know what to do. Also, um, a lot of us, we, we do math differently. We aren't taught. We were not taught the same way our children are being taught now. So we may have a perfectly good way to solve something, but it's not the same way that your child knows and it can confuse them. So to basically clear up any ambiguity, it would be really helpful if there was an example on the top of the page that you and your child could follow. In the event that there isn't, and you are in a situation where you're not quite sure what to do, then you would have to go back and um, access the lesson if you can, if it was, if it was pre-recorded. So I, d I definitely suggest asking your teachers to make sure they include examples with the math. 
My best piece of advice really is to pop, as I've been saying, plan, organize, prepare. The content, activities, and lessons will come from school. and We just need to project manage it all. If you are concerned about the content and you think it's not challenging enough or it's overwhelming and too challenging or too much, then uh, feel free to email me and we can talk about this. But by popping, we pass on our cool, organized vibes to our children. And by sharing the checklist with them each morning, we know what to expect and feel empowered to take control of their learning. Some other practical suggestions that I have are to charge your devices. iPads especially can die if you're using Zoom and they're already low on battery. Um, and, if you, and even when you plug them in, the battery still drains faster than it charges. And I've had several lessons, several Zoom lessons cut short by my students' iPads dying in the middle. And of course, stock up on ink in case you need to print more than you anticipated. Younger children especially may find it tricky to complete work on screen and will prefer a hard copy to work on. Get dressed every day. I'm sure most schools will have this as part of their policy and it's a normal part of our daily routine and it sets us up for learning. Have a defined organized work area. So clear out a designated shelf, cupboard, or kitchen surface and keep everything your children need for their schoolwork there. Use boxes, files, and folders to keep things organized and separate, especially if you have multiple children who are home learning at the same time. It's a good idea to put the date on the top of each piece of work. It is much easier to begin a day of school when everything is ready and waiting and easy to find. So make sure that pencils are sharp and the glue isn't crusted over. Keep all your supplies like pens, pencils, highlighters, crayons, markers, rulers, scissors together with the schoolwork. And of course, you can ask your children to get these things ready and organized for you. You don't have to be you know, the one doing everything. Might be a good idea to buy in some uh, lined paper exercise books. You can order them on Amazon. Just check the line ruling or the, the square uh, dimensions if you're getting squared paper for math because they come in different sizes and you wanna make sure you get the right size for your child's age and stage. Also a good idea to get a whiteboard and dry erase pens because children are used to working on whiteboards in school and they really, really love it. And same with those um, exercise books. That's the, these are the type of books they use in school and it could be that your school sends them home anyway, but if they don't, children are used to working in these and they might find it more comfortable than uh, working on a scrap of paper or on the puck -a pack the half filled puck -a pack with your scribbles and the little tenderly papery bits hanging out, they might find it you know, easier to work on one of these exercise books than whatever you've got lying around at home. Um, managing live lessons. Think about how your child can manage live lessons. Do they prefer the camera off? Make sure the teacher knows this. You need to consider the interface. In Google Meets, for example, the teacher cannot disable the chat or automatically mute everyone. Will that be problematic? You or your partner might need to rearrange your own schedule so that you can supervise a live lesson. Perhaps you need to disconnect the mouse and the keyboard if you're on a desktop, if the temptation to spam the chat is, is high for your child. Live lessons can be too much for some children and you might need to have a discussion with the teacher in advance to put a plan in place or come up with some alternate options. Breaks are key. In a normal school day, children regularly mill around the classroom. They get up to sharpen a pencil, take a book from their bags, walk across the room to work with a partner. And these mini breaks are a brief opportunity to stretch their legs and refocus while transitioning from one activity or lesson to the next. So make sure your child has the same chance for something like this at home. A trip to the loo, 15 star jumps, a run up and down the stairs are all perfect mini breaks. The trick is to do something active and quick that isn't going to distract them in a way that makes getting back to work a challenge. Longer breaks are of course crucial and I suspect there will be plenty of times for eating, playing outside or just chilling out in most schedules. 
some schools are keeping students logged in and engaged for the entire school day. But I suspect the majority of state schools will not be able to do this. And there will be times when your children will need something to do, especially if they are fast workers and finish assignments quickly. There are lots of activities you can leave out for them to do. And of course, there's playing outside and watching TV and going on the computer and playing with toys. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do these things. The screen is the best child's care that we've got when we're trying to get on with something important. But I'm here to give you suggestions of more purposeful educational activities your children can theoretically do on their own while you are working. There's always silent reading. Reading is, you know, one of the best activities we can do. And if your child is too young to read, they can sit with a book and look at the pictures. Um, you can set them work in workbooks. Sometimes it's better if you give them slightly easier work so that they won't get disheartened and come and ask you for questions or they won't get stuck. Um, that's a good way to fill time if necessary. Drawing and coloring are great. You can get math coloring worksheets where you have to um, color the, the spot, the, the box, whatever part of the picture, a certain color depending on the answer. And then when you finish, it's created a mosaic type drawing. Um, watching um, a program on TV, a documentary on YouTube or Netflix related to what they're learning about in school. And of course, because you've been popping and you've planned and organized and prepared, you know exactly what topic they're covering in school. So you would have already found some fabulous um, documentaries about the tutors or volcanoes or whatever it is that they're learning about. Again, watching anything educational that they're interested in is great too. Uh, learning to type, it's a great time to learn to type. And BBC Dance Mat is a fun, engaging program. It's really motivating and it's free. Online chess, Chess Kids is a great site. You can learn, there are tutorials and you can also play matches against a computer or other children. And it is completely anonymous and um, safe. Uh, you can set your child up with some online educational programs like Times Table Rockstars or Manga High, Math Seeds, Reading Eggs, Spelling Frame. These are all really, really fun and motivating and they will definitely improve skills. And another excellent um, program is something called OutSchool, which is um, and it's an American program that has short classes, 30 minutes to an hour, about every topic imaginable. So from creative writing to times table practice to um, sort of bespoke science programs. Um, you can even, they even have some that are, I would say, less um, inspiring, like Disney princess coloring, but if that's what your child is interested in and you need to fill the time, then that's great. Why not do it? So definitely check out OutSchool and it's available in time zones all over the world and the children who do it come from all over the world. And I'm a big fan of it. Right, how often do your children stand in a room full of toys and complain about being bored? Sometimes you just need to put out activities to make it clear what the options are. Lego on one side of the room, a marble run on the other. They will gravitate to one or the other. And this works much better than saying, how about the marble run or let's play Lego or I know fancy Monopoly. When it's out and they can see it, they're more likely to play with it. So put out the toys that you would like them to play with before you go to bed at night. So when they wake up in the morning, they will just go straight to them. Toy cycling is also a good idea. That's when you put away some toys for a while and bring them out again and they become new and exciting. Teachers do this a lot. The same is true for rearranging play spaces. Every few months I move things around in the playroom and all of a sudden they, they're recognized, the children see them and they play with them again. Don't underestimate good old fashioned puzzles and games, as well as being fun. Jigsaw puzzles and games such as Dobble, Rush Hour, or Rubik's Race are excellent for developing visual perceptive skills, which will help with reading and writing. Twister is great for gross motor skills, which in turn improves fine motor skills. All types of construction toys are obviously fabulous. They teach motor planning, patience, design, engineering, 
Board games with family are good for practicing turn-taking and developing social communication skills. Of course, Scrabble and Boggle work on spelling and Articulate is great for verbal reasoning. So now if you find that you've got more time seeing as you're all stuck in together, then puzzles and games are a great way to have fun with your family with an added educational benefit. So thank you for your time. I hope I've been able to allay any of your worries about managing home learning um, if and when you do have to uh, start it again. Hopefully not. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at Jenny at Homeschool UK. Thank you for joining me today.